New reports that the DOJ and the FTC's antitrust divisions could be setting their sights on big tech with industry giants like Amazon, Apple, Google, and Facebook facing possible investigations. Meantime, Congress also taking actions of their own. Joining me now to break down what this could all mean for consumers, consumers like you, former DOJ antitrust lawyer and law professor at the University of Tennessee, Knoxville, Maurice Stuckey. Thanks so much for uh, joining us on this Saturday afternoon. Uh, a lot of folks watching this uh, might be asking, you know, is it time for this? Is this valid? Is it long overdue, these potential investigations? Absolutely. What you're seeing is the rest of the world tackling these what we call dataopolis. And so imagine there's this like building on fire and all the other uh, antitrust authorities are trying to put it out and the U.S. is just sitting there almost on a swing set as this is going on. So I think it's not the question of why, it's why not earlier. Mm -hmm. You know, you bring up a really interesting point there. Google appealing a $1.7 billion antitrust penalty that was put in place by the European Commission had slapped that uh, down. So we're talking about really, really big bucks. And, and yet these companies, they're so big, they're able to keep moving forward. Why is it that the, you think that the U.S. is behind on this when we're seeing action in other places around the world? One of the problems is this thing called the consumer welfare standard. It's not baked into the law itself. But the thinking is, well, Google and Facebook, they provide their services for free, and the quality improves. Therefore, we must be better off. And what you, you fail to see is really the creepy surveillance that goes on underneath and how we're actually far worse off on many other dimensions. Yeah, on the creepy surveillance front, why is it such a bad idea to let, you know, just a few big tech companies really control so much of our data? I mean, is it all about privacy? Is it, is it about essentially protecting our own, our personal kind of online footprint that we create for ourselves? Oh, absolutely. I mean, it goes on so many di different dimensions. And one dimension is the reason that your kids are addicted to the phone is not because they're weak-willed, it's because Google and Facebook have created basically an ecosystem that encourages this form mm -hmm. of addiction. They're so smart, and yeah. Then, and then you look at the implications that this has on our democracy. And you have, you know, we always depend on a robust marketplace of ideas. And one concern is how Google and Facebook can really tip the marketplace of ideas to advance certain viewpoints and discourage other viewpoints. And that can have severe repercussions on our democracy. Yeah, take a listen. We have just a, a little bit of sound here. This is Tim Cook. He, of course, the CEO of Apple. I think we should be scrutinized. I don't think anybody reasonable is going to come to the conclusion that Apple's a monopoly. Our share is uh, much more modest. Uh, we're, we don't have a dominant position in any market. So you're saying you're not a monopoly? We are not a monopoly. What do you think of, of, of Cook's position there on Apple? Yeah, so, I mean, right now Apple is facing antitrust litigation, so you could mm -hmm. understand why he's advancing that position. I mean, traditionally, when we look at monopolies, we think of our cable company, right? We think of high prices, lousy service. Here, they can exert tremendous power on ways other than the price that we directly pay. And once you look then at how they control the ecosystem, then you recognize that there may not be the monopoly in the, in the old sense, but they hold significant market power in today's digital economy. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, many of these companies are remarkable. They've done incredible things and, and, and advancements and communications. So how do you walk that line where you don't want to rein them in too much because you don't want to stifle this you know, incredible innovation that we've seen that have changed things in the last 10 and 20 years? How do you walk that fine line? In the United States, there's no, it's not illegal to be a monopoly. And in fact, we want companies to innovate. We want them to compete on the merits. The problem, though, is when you have strong economic power, then you might then take steps to maintain that power, not through competition on the merits. And the other problem is that once you have strong economic power, that translates into political power. So you have concerns of crony capitalism. Yeah, and, and politicians on both sides of the aisle woke it up to this as, a, as an overall topic. Um, Maurice Stuckey, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me.